to my channel. So if you are new to my channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Danielle and I do videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Saturdays are usually dedicated to missing persons, unsolved mysteries, true crime, and Wednesdays are kind of up in the air right now. But if you would like to go ahead and join the family by clicking subscribe down below we are growing and i would love to have you for those that are new and old here hit the notification bell down below so you can immediately get notified when i have a new video up i also have an announcement that you all have been waiting for a lot of you guys actually have asked me multiple multiple times on here on twitter and on instagram and even in emails to do a makeup tutorial so it was a perfect time to do one over on my other channel my vlog channel i will have the video linked down below i did a get ready with me but not only is it a get ready with me it's a get ready with me slash 10 things i love about myself tag um, my sister created this tag. She is in the beauty community here on YouTube and she figured it was time people started spreading self-love and I think that is a great idea. It's an awesome idea. It stands for everything I stand for. So if you guys want to see how I got this particular makeup look and kind of hear me talk about more personal things, then head on over to that video and check it out. This was a very, very requested video. I got a couple of emails, I had a couple of comments, um, a couple of DMs on Instagram. People seem to really want me to do this video and I was hesitant at first because it's not technically a missing persons case anymore. It was a missing persons case at first, um, but they're definitely found, everybody is safe. Um, but it is something that is extremely bizarre and I do have a very strong opinion on it So I figured this one's definitely worth doing. It's super interesting It's an extremely extremely interesting story and it's something that will make you Wonder if it could happen to you and I don't know It's just a crazy one. So if you guys want to hear about the Trump family No, not the Trump family, but the Trump family then just keep on watching. So the gist of the story is that it was a family of five and they went on a extremely last minute tech free road trip of over 995 miles over in Australia and they were eventually found but the details surrounding this case will have you wondering what in the actual hell happened. So the parents, Mark and Jacoba, owned a farm. That can be a very, very stressful, stressful job to do. They have three children, Ariana who is 29, Mitchell who is 25, and Ella who was 22. And as far as my research led me, they all lived inside the home with their parents. On Monday the 29th of August in 2016, so almost exactly a year ago, which is kind of eerie to me, um, they all piled into a car and took off with no warning no form of communication, completely tech free, just a really random road trip, except it was a lot more than that. I'm not exactly sure how the police found out, but the police were notified that something was off. So the police went to the home to try to figure out what exactly was going on with this family. I guess it was very unusual of them to just up and leave like this and not let anyone know, not take phones, nothing. So the police got to their home and found it in a complete state of chaos. There all their keys were in the ignitions of their cars, the car doors open, the front door was unlocked, the whole entire house was just in chaos as if they had ran out in an extreme hurry. Um, it appeared as if they'd been sifting through their financial information. They had everything though like neatly stacked and organized almost as if they were looking for something in particular. They found everything of importance to the family still inside the home. Passports, IDs, mobile phones, credit cards, every bit of money that wasn't cash. They left everything behind. The police soon came to realize that it was a cash only off the grid trip and they knew that was going to make it extremely difficult to find out where this family had gone and why. The only phone that had been taken with the family belonged to Mitchell, the son. And interestingly enough, about 19 miles up the road, Mark told him to throw it out the window of a moving vehicle because 
They claimed they were being followed and tracked through the cell phone and someone was coming to take all of their money. So that's pretty much what ended up prompting this trip. The parents seemed very, very upset. The whole family seemed very upset and they all seemed extremely convinced that someone was out to kill them. Someone was out to take their money. Um, they were being followed. They were constantly being watched. So that's what kind of prompted this whole entire tech-free trip. So when Mitchell brought his phone with him, that kind of gave police an idea that he wasn't necessarily buying into all of this. So after they left, they drove the entire day and the entire night. They did not stop for a single thing. They had traveled about 800 kilometers to a place in New South Wales called Bathurst. Bathurst? I don't know. You guys know I am not good at this. I apologize. And that led them into Tuesday at 7 a.m. after their full day and full night trip, Mitchell finally decided he was done with it and he abandoned ship pretty quickly. So later that morning, they continued on without questioning why their son left, I guess. A very popular tourist spot called the Janolan Caves. I'm once again, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but there's no telling. And once they reached these caves, Rihanna and Ella decided that they didn't want to be with their parents either, and they also decided to just abandon ship. And interestingly enough, they were so desperate to get away from the situation that they actually stole a car as their means of escape. They drove south to a town called Goldburn where they stopped at a gas station and at this gas station for some reason then they even decide to take it steps further and separate themselves which to me it makes this so incredibly confusing. So one by one, each family member is just kind of escaping. And to me, if I were in a situation where, you know, we were all trying to run away from something, um, if I decided to leave my parents behind, I would want to stay with my sibling. I would not want to split apart for any sort of reason, but Ella really wanted to get back home to her horses. She needed to feed them. She was concerned about them. So she decided she was going to go ahead and head home. And there is really no telling what Rihanna planned on doing. So the story really quickly made it to the media because to friends and family, this made absolutely no sense. This whole entire family just kind of up and disappeared. Um, at this point, no one knew that Mitchell, Rihanna, or Ella had left the parents. There was no way of communication. Mitchell hadn't even arrived back home yet, Rihanna and Ella hadn't arrived back home yet, so no one really knew what was going on. And obviously, being a very bizarre story, Australia kind of really caught fire with it and they were trying to figure out what in the world happened. Tuesday night, Ella returned home and was immediately greeted by police and bombarded by police trying to figure out what had happened, asking her tons of questions. And then the following morning on Wednesday, Mitchell arrived back after taking a ton of different trains trying to get back home. He did a really strange interview together talking about what exactly had happened. And when I first watched this interview, I was just immediately convinced that there was something weird going on. There was some different motive. They were hiding something. From my standpoint, the way that they were acting was really bizarre. They kept saying, oh, well, we can't explain it either. It was very bizarre. It was very weird. We don't know what happened. They were really, really vague, and it was almost to a point of being too vague, as if they were trying to hide something. That was just my initial reaction to it. It created even more media attention because these two children didn't know where the rest of their family was. They had each returned home at different times, each left their family at different times, and neither of them had any idea or could explain where they had gone, why they had gone, or what had happened. Rihanna was the next to, I guess, be discovered because that's essentially what happened. For some reason or another, she climbed into the back of a stranger's truck and he traveled about an hour away before he realized he was hearing kicking in the back of his truck and he pulled over, looked back there and found her in a completely catatonic state. She had no idea who she was, how she got there, where she was, what was going on. So he called police and she was picked up and taken to a mental hospital in Goulburn where she was then treated for an undisclosed amount of time for a mental illness. Right after that, an interstate search was then started. Mark and Jacoba, no one still knew where they were. One of the children was in psychiatric care. The other two couldn't even tell them what had happened the previous days. So it was kind of a scramble. No one knew what kind of state to expect them in when they found them. No one knew where they were headed, what they were doing. So it was a big scramble to just find them alive. They had not gone any further north than the caves and actually 
actually had already turned around and started heading back towards Melbourne. They traveled about 600 kilometers south and then they were in the Victorian town of Wangaratta. Wangaratta? I'm sorry. <laughs> and somehow, they also became separated. When they became separated, Jacoba started to head north again, even though they had backtracked another 600 kilometers back towards their home. No one to this day even knows how she traveled north again. She didn't have a car because Mark had taken it, her husband, and no one's even sure exactly how they got separated. It is like a bunch of confusion and there's no answers to anything. Then the next day on Thursday, she was found about 350 kilometers north again in a town of Yass. And she had apparently tried to get herself a motel. She seemed extremely agitated, um, ended up running out and was found walking on the side of the road in an extremely agitated and um, very delirious state. So she was taken to a hospital. They immediately recognized and found out who she was. So then she was transported to the hospital that her daughter was in psychiatric care in because they were trying, kind of trying to bring the family back together, put all the pieces together to figure out what was going on. Finally, on a Saturday night, six days after this whole entire journey started, they found Mark and he was wandering along a road near the airport in Wangaratta. He was extremely distressed, he was pissed off. Um, when he was captured by the police, he was not happy about it. They said he was in an extremely agitated state. Um, he was taken to the police station. He was, I mean, for hours interrogated and questioned. He was given a psych evaluation. There was nothing that appeared to be wrong with him. Um, and eventually he was released to the custody of his brother who happened to be a police officer at the time. When he was leaving the police station, he gave the finger to all the reporters. He was pissed, man. Like, he was angry. I don't know if he was angry because of the attention. I don't know if he was angry because he thought um, having all this public eye on him would have him found by whoever was following him. Um, I'm not sure why he was angry, but he was very, very angry and it was very obvious. So the police looked further into this. They finally figured out that the parents had, and the family had believed that they were under some sort of threat, that they thought someone was following them. So the police did a serious investigation into it and they found absolutely no reason why the family should have felt like that. There was nobody that was following them, no one trying to take their money. Nothing absurd was going on other than the family's actions themselves. Sergeant Mark Knight, who knew the family, said there was absolutely no background of mental health problems. They were not in some sort of strange religion. There was just nothing that pointed to why this very healthy, average, everyday family would have done something like this. When Mitchell was talking to the reporters, he said that he could not explain anything, that he had no real way to explain to them what had happened, just that they were in an extreme fear for their life and they just needed to flee, that it was a bunch of everyday things kind of just built on top of each other that caused this breakdown. A lot of people immediately started saying there were some sort of chemicals on their farm, they'd been poisoned, they'd been drugged, because as everyday people we don't really expect others to act like that and when there, when there is some sort of strange, unexplained thing like that that happens, when it's one person, yeah, we get that. We're like, okay, they must have some sort of mental illness that they don't know about. Maybe they just had a mental breakdown, but when it's an entire family, people don't immediately look towards mental issues. They immediately blame it on things like chemicals. They claim that they were suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. The entire house was tested. Everything was tested. The farm was tested and all of that was ruled out. They were just fine. Nothing of that sort had even happened. This is where I start to kind of put in my opinion and spread a little bit of knowledge. Um, mental health is a very serious thing and you can be a very healthy, very normal average person um, and things can still happen. So what everyone is pretty sure happened was that the family suffered from collective delusions. It's a rare psychological occurrence that happens in only close-knit families. And basically what happens is that you reinforce others' delusions and create a mass panic. A lot of people really spoke badly about this family. A lot of people um, just are kind of rude and really judgmental. Um, I must admit that at first I was like, this is a crazy family. Like, I don't know what's going on with them. Like, this is the craziest, most bizarre thing that I've ever heard. Um, it's definitely something that makes us kind of 
put our nose up and um, a lot of people pass judgment on this family. I am sure they're going to face that for the rest of their lives. But there is actually an explanation for all this and it is a lot more common uh, than you think it is. And it's actually probably happened to you on a much calmer, much calmer, much calmer level. There's a French term and I am not going to even attempt to butcher it so I'll put it here on the screen but essentially what it means is madness of two and it happens in very healthy, very average couples, um, people who have had no history of mental health disorders or you know any imbalances in their body, any illnesses, otherwise just very healthy average people and what happens is the person in the couple for some reason has some sort of paranoia going on and um, they might be paranoid that someone's out to get them. I read stories where someone was paranoid that aliens were coming to get them, that a certain sound they were hearing was maybe the sound of this mythical creature that was coming to get them. Um, you know, they thought the government was after them. Just one person has an extreme paranoia and the other person in the couple, um, it eventually almost spreads to them. And I know it sounds crazy, but this is literally a thing like this happens to people completely normal people just bounce each other's paranoia back and forth until they both get in this extremely aggravated state and there is no sense of reality and there is no calming down and it is just it's insane and it happens frequently and i think it's interesting because when i was doing research into this particular occurrence um, I found a ton of stories of people who knew people who had this happen to them, um, family members that it happened to, and almost every single time there was this extreme paranoia between a couple and then eventually the whole family got in on it and then they would flee. And then most of them would, would return back in a short period of time, almost as if it kind of wears off. So a lot of people saw that and they understood it and they could see it immediately um, in the parents. And the police could not find out who it first started off with. They they're pretty sure it started off with the father, but eventually the mother got really, really deep into it. A lot of people were wondering why the children were in the state that they were in. I mean, think about it. Rihanna ended up in the hospital, and I'm pretty sure her and the mother were there for over six months. As of March, I know for a fact that they were still receiving treatment. Um, however, I could not find anything more on it. I couldn't find if they've been released since then. I searched forever trying to figure it out. Um, but that is where another thing starts to come in and this is something that probably all of us have experienced and we don't even recognize that this could happen because of it. It's called small group panics um, and the best way I can describe it is I guess an experience that I've been through. So you know when you are going to like a haunted house or you know you're in a situation with a bunch of your friends where you're all scared. You're excited but you're scared and everything is fine and you're all fine until that one person screams. <laughs> the one person loses their mind. And without even thinking about it and without anything actually happening to you or your own thoughts going on, you all start screaming as well. And all of a sudden, before you know it, everybody is screaming, people are getting pushed on the ground. The concept of normal reality and what's actually going on is totally thrown out the window. Everyone's just running around in a mass panic. I mean, you are pushing people over that's been your best friend for years and you don't even realize it. It's the same thing as mob mentality. It's just when you're in a group of people and there is just this atmosphere already going on and all of a sudden one person just does just the right thing to make everybody panic, it can create huge issues like this. It is said that they were dealing with a ton of stuff. It was currently in the spring transition for their farm, so pretty much during the winter on their farm, it just lays dormant, nothing happens. They don't have anything to do, and they were approaching a spring, which meant the whole farm was about to get up and running again. That's an extremely, extremely busy time. I live in an area where there's a ton of farming. I've been around it pretty much my entire life. It is a big, deal and it is a ton of work. Mark was really, really stressed out about that. Um, they also had their business that they were worrying about. The wife was worrying about it. She was stressed out. They had home renovations going on. So they had a bunch of other things to stress about and it was just creating this really tense environment to begin with. And when there's already a bunch of very strange things happening and unusual feelings going along, when one person freaks out, 
it's going to trigger so many people like a domino effect. So essentially the entire family got thrown into it. And it literally scared and convinced them into thinking that their lives were in danger. And I could not find what the daughter was being treated for, same as the mother. Um, I find it interesting that the dad didn't go because it seems to be where it all stemmed from. Um, when he did speak to reporters and everything a couple months after, he said that his whole family was suffering from some mental health issues and they were trying to recover and better themselves. Um, as of a couple months ago, they all seem to be doing much better. They're posting to social media as normal. They're continuing their lives as normal people. They're all totally back to where they were before this even happened. My personal opinion is that the mother and the daughter that ended up in psychiatric care got so scared and worked up that they just fried their brain. And I think that's absolutely heartbreaking. And then to think about all the crap that this family's had to deal with and all of the negative things people have said about them and everyone calling them crazy, imagine how terrifying it would be if one day you as a healthy person were fine and then the next you were convinced out of nowhere that someone was trying to kill you, kill your family. I mean, that's terrifying. They've been through a lot. A lot of people tend to ignore mental health disorders. A lot of people try to pretend like mental health disorders and, you know, things like that don't exist. And in reality, they do. And whether you think you're fine or not, you're just as vulnerable as everyone else. Even though this is rare, there are still people frequently that this does happen to and that's got to be terrifying. That's why I really, really wanted to cover this case. They were missing. Fortunately enough, they were all found and that does not happen very often. And the fact that when they were missing, they were in this altered state, I am so thankful. And I am sure all of their friends and family and themselves are thankful that they returned home in one piece because you just don't know. To think of all the terrible things that people are saying about this family when they have gone through so much that they did not ever expect to have to go through in their life. I don't know, I just feel bad. And I feel like everyone looks at them like they're crazy and they're not. It's, I mean, our brains are insane. Our brains do so much that we just don't know about. And I think we need to be gentle with people who have mental health disorders and we need to be respectful. And instead of throwing this family under the bus for doing the most bizarre thing, which I still think is the craziest thing I have ever heard happen before, we still need to be respectful. My point on this channel is to bring awareness to things and that's why I was so happy people suggested this because I had not heard of it and when I looked further into it, this is a perfect example of bringing awareness to something and that is the fact that mental illnesses can come out of nowhere and they can just happen and sometimes, you know, you don't know what the background is, you don't know every aspect of the story and I've given you as much as I can possibly give you. I can't give you any more than this, but be aware and be mindful and I will never take a story and try to sensationalize it for views and for drama and to make it more interesting and I won't ever you know, purposely talk bad about someone to make it more entertaining and that's something that it's in my morals and my beliefs and when I started this channel um, that's something that I stood by and I will continue to stand by and I hope you guys appreciate that. Um, I hope you understand why I did this video the way that I did. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of a different one and just an FYI, next Wednesday will be a missing persons video. Um, I know I don't normally do those on Wednesdays, but I've got a very, very interesting one that's got a huge break in the case and it is something that I've been keeping track of for almost my entire adult life, so I really want to speak on it. So I hope you guys are excited about that. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking now. I've been rambling now for Lord knows how long. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up. It helps me so much. Make sure to share all my videos to help spread awareness and grow our family. Please check out all of my social media sites. I talk to you guys on there all of the time and I'd love to have you on there as well. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.